Hello. I am back this week at my regular time of one in the afternoon on Friday for the Friday afternoon art stream. Hooray. So I'm working on the same page I was working on last week. This is chapter 22, page three of Age of Night. Um, as you can see, I have finished drawing it and I even lettered it. I'm not going to do lettering on live stream because lettering is really boring to watch and I'm not going to do that to you. Uh, I do have an instructional video elsewhere on this channel if you want to learn how I do lettering, but I'm not going to make you sit through that unless you absolutely want to. So at this point, I've got it drawn, I've got it lettered, which means now it's time to start inking. And as always, I start by inking my backgrounds with my lovely Hunt 102 Crow Quill. And I've got a lot of architectural elements going on in the background here. So I'm gonna need to use my straight edge and probably some French curves for some of these guys to get all these architectural, architectural elements. Um, actually straight and uh, true curves instead of weird wobbly curves that would happen if I did them freehand. All right, my, this is a dip pen. There is no actual ink contained in here. I have to dip it into a bottle of ink that's off camera with the messy corner of my desk that you don't need to see. And this straight edge I've had since college. It's very handy. I don't, accidents happen and occasionally I'll get ink trapped underneath it and pool and it turns into a disaster. And hopefully you don't get to witness that today because it's never a fun time and I don't want to do it. But for the most part, it's avoided by the fact that the edge of the triangle does not actually sit flush against the page. It's There's like a little channel here on either side that holds the edge of the triangle off the paper. So unless you let your, unless you let your pen get really gunky and your, and your straight edge to get really gunky, your triangle to get really gunky, then uh, you shouldn't have to worry about ink pooling underneath it and causing a mess. See, as you can see, a big glob just escaped there. So, I'm just gonna clean that off before I proceed. And yes, I was holding my pen in my teeth, which is why I sounded funny. Cause it still had ink in it. I don't want to set it down and make a mess or lose all that ink. Boop. YouTube informs me I have a new subscriber. Hello, new subscriber. Sweet. Happy to have you joining the party. Um, and as always, if you guys are watching, feel free to drop a comment and say hi. I am glancing up occasionally to see if anyone is talking, and I'm always more than happy to answer questions or chat as I work. So by all means, even if all you want to do is say, hey, I appreciate it. But if you have questions about anything I'm doing, then I will be more than happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Trying to make sure I stay in frame here, too. Oops. Out of ink. So if I run out of ink when I'm doing a long line like that, I'll go further back and kind of overlap what I had already done. Hey, new subscriber. Hey, it's Jeff. Hello, Jeffrey. A player from several of my games at Origins. I unfortunately didn't make it to Origins this year. It's always a good time, but just the stars did not align for it this year for me. All right, so that's a bunch of straight edges up there. I'm going to let a lot of that 
in the top panel dry before I try to do anything else there because all of those lines I just did, especially on this side, this side's probably dry already, but this side is still very wet. And if I try to do anything else, drag my tools through it, I'm gonna make a big smeary mess and I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna come down here to a lower panel and do some straight edge work down here. There's not much to do in these later panels. Most of it's in that big first establishing shot. If you watched last week's stream, you know that this panel gave me some trouble, but I've reworked it since then. I'm pretty pleased with how it ultimately came out. Ooh, that was messy. Huh. And Jeffrey says, my tankard was empty in sadness and you're missing origins. Yeah. I was pretty bummed not to make it. Fortunately, there's only, only so many things I can get to in a given year. And origins is a lot harder to get to now that everybody's like in school. <laughs> it's, it always happens to be, it's not supposed to be, but because of snow days, it always ends up being the last week of the school year which is a pretty chaotic time when you have a kid in daycare slash preschool and a kid in elementary school and a spouse who's a school teacher. So end of the school year is kind of a crazy time in our household. even crazier is that now it's summer vacation and they're all here. Except not right at the moment. I kicked them out of the house so I could do this. Otherwise you'd be hearing lots of screaming and children fighting in the background. Okay. So I've got that roof line done. Now down here at the bottom is actually water. So I'm not gonna make a perfectly straight line, but I do wanna keep the line true to where it's supposed to be going. So I'm just gonna kind of wiggle my pen along the straight edge. because then you still have a straight-ish line. It's still following the line that it needs to. Whoops, such a mess. It's still following the line that it needs to, but you've got the movement of the waves there, the water being uneven. And now I have to clean up my triangle before I cause a disaster. All of this technical stuff is probably my least favorite stage of inking, but it needs to get done. And if you do it well, then it leads to a lot more convincing final result. Don't want the whole thing to be all cattywampus, so. All right, whip my page around so I can get this other line over here. Is that in frame? Sort of, just barely. Okay, now yeah, it's slightly better. Here we go. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for the straight lines. At this point, everything else is gonna be 
curved lines. Oh no, wait, I've got one more right down here. I spoke too soon. I've got this water line to do, which I could probably get away with not doing, but I'm gonna anyway. Scrubbing off my triangle. Okay. And pen a quick rinse as well. Now I've got to find a French curve to start doing some of these curved lines up here, some of these arches. And on a French curve, you just want to find whatever shape on the French curve most closely matches what you're working on. The French curve is set up the same way the triangle is, so that it has those little channels. So you shouldn't have to worry about the ink running underneath it unless you let it get way too gunky. So yeah, see here, and I'm not going to be able to fit like this entire curve on here. That's not entirely right. So a lot of times what you end up having to do is do like half the curve with one part of the French curve and then move it and do the other half, which is what we're going to have to do here. Come on, I know there's still ink in here. So I need a little more. So after that dries, then I'll be able to come back in and do this other side of the curve. Sometimes you have to do a curve in two or three sections to get it just right. And there's all these different parts of the French curve have different angles too. And I think the angle that I want, I'd have to drag through that wet line. So we're gonna just move along for right now and come back to this, let that dry for a little bit. So move over here. It's a lot of jumping around at this stage. That was messy. That could have ended badly. So messy. Oof. Curve. I think that's as close as I'm going to get to correct on there. Okay. With the curves especially is where it gets really tricky to not be dragging your tools through wet lines. So on that stage, a lot of times I will kind of jump down to a completely different panel and work on some of the inking there to give everything up here that's still very wet a chance to dry before I go back in on a different angle to do some more of those curves. I mean, or I'll just like mess around on social media instead of 
instead of working, but that would be very boring for you if I just started playing around on Twitter when I'm supposed to be drawing for you. So we're not going to do that. We're going to actually focus and keep working. All right. So now this is fun, laying in lots of tiny little dots. This technique is called stippling, or making yourself crazy. All right, but obviously now this is supposed to be something different than this, but they look the same. It's okay, we're going to do another pass. This section back here, which is most of the wall, this is one of these columns, one of these columns. Gonna do some hatching to create a tone here. darker in areas where I want it to be. Add another layer in places where I want it to be a little bit darker. And more of the stippling. These techniques can take a bit of time, but ultimately I feel like the results that you get out of them are worthwhile. So, so I keep with it, even if it does take me forever. Oh, really, I move pretty quickly at a lot of this since I have a lot of practice. several hundred pages of Age of Night at this point. So. I'm reading a 400-ish page graphic novel right now. Um, Dylan McConnes is... Queen of the Sea just came out recently. I read the first hundred or so pages in the car on the ride home after picking it up because I just opened it up to like, oh, I'm going to just kind of skim the first couple of pages and I just couldn't put it down. It's so good. It's so good. I'm on like page 300 and some odd. I'll probably finish it today. It's so good, you guys. And the whole thing is done in watercolor. It's a 400 page graphic novel and it's done in watercolor. I don't even, I mean, I, 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 I just can't even imagine. I mean, I kind of can because obviously I like to work myself to death too, but it's just so darn good. She kind of did a more simplified drawing style so that the, uh, you know, so that she could probably finish it in this lifetime, but it also works really well for the story. The writing is so good and the artwork is so beautiful and I love the story that it's telling and it's just so, ah, uh, uh, I love it so much. I can't wait to finish it so that probably today, I'll probably finish it tonight before bed, but 
oh, I can't wait to finish it so that I can just rave to everyone about how great it is because it is so great. I'm enjoying it so much. So you should read it too. All right, so we've got the shadow from where she's leaning against the wall, which we're gonna want to be pretty dark. So I'm gonna go and start building this up first. And then if we need to give it a little bit more after we do the rest of the wall around it, we can do that too. Yes, anybody who happens to be watching, feel free to leave a comment and say hi or ask me questions or anything. I am more than willing to chat while I'm doing this. I do keep stealing glances up at my monitor occasionally to see if people are watching. And if anyone's left any comments. So I may not respond immediately, but I will. I will answer your questions if I can. What is your equivalent of what I call the Bob Ross moment? His painting looks done to us rabble, then he plops down a tree in the middle of it all. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's a different process because I, I do everything here. Um, I do draw everything out and I don't add anything really at the inking stage other than like textures and this sort of thing. So everything that's gonna be in the image is here already. Um, I'd say a lot of times the final thing that kind of pulls it together after the fact, like when it looks like it should be done, is sometimes going in and doing some after I do the brush work, which will be the figures, which I'll do next week for everybody. Uh, is that then sometimes we'll go back in and, and uh, plop in some big dark areas, like there's some big solid black areas. They're called spot blacks. Um, and that kind of, like, if they're used where they're supposed to be, which hopefully is what I'm doing, it can really tie the page together and make it look, like, give it a whole nother le level, which it's usually, like, one of the last things that I do. A very different process doing a pen and ink and brush and ink comic page than doing in oil or acrylic painting. And I try to be pretty fast, but not as fast as Bob Ross. He had that down. We're going to darken that up just a little bit. All right. Okay, so now I've done the background on this panel and everything up here should be nice and dry. So I'm gonna pop back up and do some more of these curves. Now that everything up here has dried so I don't really have to worry about dragging my tool through a wet curve and cursing all existence. 
which was a distinct possibility earlier. All right, where's the right curve for what I want over here? That is probably as close as I'm gonna get. Other side of this one. And that last little bit there is going to have to wait until that dries. Okay. Like I said, that, that, whole, that whole process, all of this... Uh, drafting tool process takes a long time because now I have to wait for everything I just did to dry before I can go back and try to do the handful of these that I have not finished yet. I haven't even started on these columns. Alright, sorry, try not, not trying to make you seasick, but I'm going to whip this around for a second so that I can get the curves on this column. Whoops. Okay. All right, so now I've got those curves, so now I can probably do the background on this page. All right. Water line down there again. And uh, for the most part, the figures are going to be done in brush, which will be the next stage after this, which we'll do on next week's stream. Sometimes these little tiny details like shoelaces, I will do in nib because they're just so tiny and fiddly that they're kind of a pain to try to do with the brush. It's just easier to do it with the nib pen. Like, I, I can pull a line that fine with a brush, but it takes a lot more effort than doing it with a pen and doesn't provide any advantage trying to do that, so. little ripples in the water I'm going to just be outlining in pen because the water is going to be black it's gonna be one of those big spot blacks we talked about But now we have to do more dots. More dots. It's like a 
WoW meme back in the day. Full disclosure, I never played WoW. But I had roommates who very, very played WoW. Back in its heyday. I remember there being some sort of joke about more dots. More dots. I didn't get it, but it was just something my roommates like to say all the time. So I'm like... I'm like your confused old auntie trying to <laughs> explain about a meme she saw online. But doesn't understand what memes are. It's, I just stop talking. So many dots in this setting goes on for a few pages. <laughs> I'm gonna really regret this. It's like no matter what I choose for a background, by the time I'm done with a scene, I'm angry at myself for having chosen it. But realistically, what was I gonna choose that was gonna be better? If it was scumbled, that wouldn't be better. I would still scumbling is where you do the little scribbles. That, that would still take forever. Probably take longer than the stippling, actually. Oh, well. Actually, I think that's supposed to be in front of that. There we go. All the little dots. What time are we at? 1.32. We're already halfway through our lovely drawing session this afternoon. I hope people have been having a good time watching me draw. My dots on the column. And if you have been having, what, having a good time watching me draw or you just like to hear me prattle on, uh, you can also subscribe to this channel so that you know when I go live again. I'm trying to keep it consistent. I really would like to make it around this time every Friday. Uh, obviously, sometimes that just does not work out for various reasons. I think next week I will probably have to skip, actually, because I will be on the road on my way to Plastic City Comic Con in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. So hopefully I'll see some of y'all there. If you're in the area, I want to say admission is free or really cheap. I don't remember. It's not expensive. I know it's either like it's either like five dollars or it's free. I can't remember. So don't quote me on it being that cheap. But I think that was the deal with that one. I do so many of these shows in a year. I get them confused sometimes. But I've had a couple weeks off since my last show, and now this is. What's coming up next weekend? A lot of my friends go to Plastic City every year. I haven't made it. This will be the first year that I'm making it to Plastic City. I'm kind of excited. I always like checking out a new show. All right. There's all the dots. Dots. Damage over time. Oh, okay. I see. That makes sense now. Thank you, Jeffrey. That's what the joke was about. Moved on from dots to lines.
And when I have a big space to fill like this, I like to go ahead and give myself a couple of quick guidelines. Taking care to make sure they're nice and straight because over a large space like that, it's really easy to accidentally start tilting and then your lines that were nice and parallel to the side of the panel over here are now at a 45 degree angle to it over here because your hand just kind of drifts to the side. So that's why I like to have, like throw in some guidelines for myself early on so that I don't do that because otherwise that will absolutely happen. Because I'm not a robot. I can, I'm fairly disciplined, but I'm still only human. Fill that space all in. Almost there. Almost got a whole wall. And then we'll add a little bit more dimension and variation to it once we get just the base tone laid down. So now I've got that base tone in. I'm gonna get just a little bit darker over here. Just a help delineate where that column comes in. A little more down here. A little more over here. A little bit more up top. All right, so now it's just not quite so flat. I mean, it's a wall. It's supposed to be somewhat flat, but not boring to look at flat. Okay, now let's try to finish up some of these curves we have going on over here. There's those. Oh, yep. I still have this last little bit of this arch. Big arch over in the corner. There we go. Okay. Um, I also still have columns. See what I can get on these without 
I'm getting into trouble with some of my other recently made marks. That one should be nearly flat because it's practically sitting on the horizon line. So. Okay, and then the other ones are going to have to go in the other direction, so I'm going to have to do those in a separate pass because if I flip my curve around, I'm going to drag it through all of those. So we're going to move over here. Work on some of these. So yeah, I do find some of this technical drafting stuff a wee bit tedious, but, but it's worthwhile. It helps keep the spaces a lot more believable. Which helps lend to making your story feels like, feel like it exists in a real place and that's kind of worth something. I think that helps make the story work better. Obviously not everybody thinks, not everybody has the same kind of philosophy there. Like some people think that it's, that that's not necessarily worth the amount of effort. And it's not wrong. It depends on the story that you're trying to tell. And what you're prioritizing in it. And that's totally fine. My preference in fantasy is just for having Having settings that feel lived in and believable and having your architecture look like it can actually stand and has had some attention paid to it, I think that goes a long way to helping to achieve that look. but it is not by any means the only way to do things. Okay, I only have one more panel down here that I can really do any work with while I wait for that pass of curves to dry. Um, and that's this one right here, because this bottom panel down here, the background for this one is just gonna be black to just keep emphasis on Kamaria as this lone figure and the things that she's saying, which I didn't have to mask this. <laughs> it's so nice to not have to mask the word balloons <laughs> when I do these. I know I have to do it sometimes, but it was nice to not have to this time um, because she's really not saying anything spoilery. She's just talking about how much it stinks being wandering through the sewers trying to find her way out. So, which, if you aren't current on the comic, I guess is kind of a spoiler, but it's it's on the website. It's for free on the website. You can go read it right now at ageofnight.com, just like it's listed in this description. More dots. Dots everywhere. Totally be tired of drawing little dots by the end of this scene. Of which there are still several pages after this one. But I'm not sure when the next, uh, what the next page I'm going to let you guys watch is going to be. We'll find out find a good spot in the script. It's getting trickier all the time, finding a good spot in the script where I can show you what's happening without it being too spoilery. It was especially challenging at the end of uh, the last chapter as I was getting ready to release volume three of the book because, man, there was a lot that happened there. 
But anything I choose now is pretty much presuming that you've that you're caught up. So if you haven't, I'm sorry. But if you haven't, then you must have a hard time following me on anything. Any of the social medias where I update all the time about what I'm doing. Because there's the Facebook page, there's my Twitter account, which is just at Age of Night. And I also post art updates on Instagram all the time. Which is at Amanda Call Art. Just my name, Art, all one word. So, you know, pick your poison, whichever avenue you prefer to see updates of comic things and other artwork I'm working on. Or, you know, pictures of my cat and my kids and my lunch or what, what have you. All those things people use social media for. I'm kind of keeping the texture in this background, but I'm doing more of like a halo effect, which is something I do a lot on these panels that are close-ups, rather than trying to render a bunch of background that you're hardly going to see. I just kind of draw focus on the close-up of the character and what they're saying, although she's not saying anything like that. I especially like to do it when someone's saying something that's very important. But it's like, no, pay attention now. Look, the panel's going to draw your attention in on what they're saying. But at this point, she's just complaining about her busted boot. Too bad, so sad. Okay, what time are we at? 1.48. Oh, my goodness. The hour's almost over. All right, sorry, have to whip the page around again. Because now we have to do these arches going, these arcs going in the other direction. So, sorry, I gotta wiggle this around to find just the right angle because my French curve is running into the clip on my board here. Because when I'm doing nib inking, I am in this somewhat awkward position. Where I have a uh, Masonite drawing board kind of perched on my lap and leaned up against my drafting table because my drafting table is at this kind of angle. And board is at this angle because if I were to try to use a dip pen at this angle, I would have a big mess. So I have to kind of balance this board here so that it's closer to being flat because trying to work with a dip pen on a not flat surface is not a good plan. a good way to end up with a streaky running mess. Because gravity. Alright. Look at that. So now we've got as, as much time as that seems to have taken, now that I've gotten all of those curves plotted in here, the rest of this is not going to take me very long at all, as you saw with these other panels and the way that I blazed right through them. So, 
take some time up front to it takes a little time up front to get this kind of seam laid out as you have to go through all the all the drafting tools and waiting for things to dry and all of that, but the results are pretty nice. I, I think anyway, the results are well worth it. So now I can start going in and doing the same kind of texture work that I did in these up here. Got just the tiniest little sliver between this column and the edge of the panel. And whoops. And it was getting a little gunky there. Gonna wash that off. All right. So it sounds like now that I'm looking at my calendar, it sounds like I probably will not be going live next week, but for sure the following week we'll be doing inking the figures on this page. I'll probably get at least very close to fi finishing this one for you then. So if you want to see that and make sure you don't miss it, then be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you can catch me later. Um, I'm working on another video for when I reworked this panel. So that's something that you're interested in seeing. You'll also get notified when that happens too. If you do the subscribe thing. You do not have to feel obligated to do the subscribe thing. If you don't like to do the subscribe thing. I totally understand. But if you haven't read Age of Night yet, my fantasy webcomic that this is from, and this looks like something that might be intriguing to you, you can find that at ageofnight.com. I update every Wednesday night slash Thursday morning. Every week you get a new comic page. Um, also, if you're on, if you decide that you want to support me on Patreon, you get to see all the pages a week early. Plus you get to see even more like behind the scenes and process stuff like this which is really cool if this is a thing that you're into. I personally like seeing people's process and how they make stuff, how they come up with things, how they work. I always find it very fascinating. So that's one of the options if you decide to become a patron. And that's just uh, patreon.com slash age of night. Or you can search for my name. That'll bring it up too. another good option. Now, like I said earlier, next week, the reason I'm missing is because I'm going to be at Plastic City Comic Con in Pittsburgh, Massachusetts. And the following weekend, I will be at Down East Fantasy Con. And that's right in Bangor, Maine. So that's a hometown convention for me. I don't have to leave my home. I can come home and sleep in my own bed after <laughs> the opening night of the convention. That's always a nice bonus. The only traveling I have to do is just as far as I would have to go to, to go to Walmart anyway, so. Which is not an insignificant distance, but it's not like a road trip like going to Massachusetts is gonna be for me since I live in the middle of nowhere. You can see I'm on the columns where the dots are the only thing providing any definition that I am concentrating them, making more of them in places where I need the form to curve or to create shadow like on the lower edge of each of these blocks of the column.
Getting there. Almost done with this column. Only got three blocks left. I can maybe finish them by the time our session is done for today. <laughs> I have four, less than four minutes till I've been on here for an hour. We're getting there. We're getting there. Pretty painstaking process, but stippling is also kind of mesmerizing. You kind of just have to like enter this weird Zen headspace to <laughs> to keep doing this kind of work without going totally crazy. A lot of times I'll like listen to podcasts or music or have like a TV show that I don't have to look at, but I can listen to. Dramas a lot of times are good for that because everything's on the dialogue. Um, some comedies too. Stuff that's very dialogue driven I can listen to while I'm working. So that my brain has something to do other than just wait for this to be done. So. All right, um, that's that column and we're pretty much at time. So just a quick review. This was pencils earlier. And we've managed to get, in this hour, we've managed to get all of the drafting tool, straight edge and French curve work done on the whole page, particularly on this first panel. It was a lot of work. And I've got the backgrounds completed for the middle tier here. The bottom tier is just not black background, so we weren't doing that at this stage. So I still have a fair amount of work to do on this first panel, but now that all of that drafting tool work is done, you can see that this will all move along a lot faster. And I'm in a pretty good place for just an hour's work. Thank you, everyone, who decided to hang out and spend some other afternoon watching me draw. And I will see you all in a couple of weeks here on this channel. So I'll see you then. Bye.